Thank you very much. Um, following on uh, this great um, summary of uh, the first two workshops, my task uh, now is to give a super brief introduction and link these two topics, legal frameworks and social impact measurement to the strategy making, which is what the, the main thread, I, I suppose, of this workshop series would be. And so I'm on a mission impossible to do this in about 12 minutes but uh, hoping to be more uh, sort of a, a, an idea provoker and thought, thought provoker. On the next slide, I just wanted to remind you, excuse me, on the next one, yes, how um, already the basic documents that we started all of this with, which is the council recommendation of 2023, was um, placing a, a, a huge emphasis on encouraging member states to develop enabling frameworks. This doesn't mean enabling legal frameworks, it means enabling frameworks, policy and possibly legal frameworks, focusing on some aspects uh, that um, based on data gathering would really help um, the uptake and uh, further development of social economy in the member states. And the ones that I marked here in red, access to markets and public procurement, state aid taxation, are specifically ones that the, the recommendations give a lot of detail on. And these possibly require a more um, legal approach than maybe some of the others. On the next slide, just as a very brief reminder, Helen already, Helene, sorry, already um, summarized this, where the legal framework actually links into um, the building blocks um, that we have been discussing. And on the one hand, administrative and in institutional setup as a building block often requires um, some sort of um, legal provisions, especially if there are requirements like a social economy registry that needs to rest on something, or if, um, uh, the government decides to set up a coordinating body, a social enterprise council or, or a social economy unit within one of the ministries or across the ministries, then that needs to rest on some sort of, of legal ground. But also visibility and recognition where legal forms, legal status, um, a, a framework law or even specific um, um, laws regulating various forms of social economy entities will be very helpful to uh, raise visibility within the state administration as well as maybe in general. I think the point we wanted to emphasize already back in the second workshop, but very much so now as well, is that setting up a legal framework ideally should not be the starting point, but rather part of the strategy and serve the vision and the objectives rather than drive them. On the next slide, I just wanted to also um, come back to the point that we made, I think, several times earlier, which is that, yes, um, it is um, important and many countries adopt um, various legal approaches. Amal will talk about um, all the details, the nitty gritty, which I will not go into at the moment. But there are also many policy instruments at your disposal that you can use to complement or instead of regulation. And I think this is important because uh, um, as we will see, and I'm sure you have experienced, regulating uh, not only design of legal frameworks, but also implementation, that's very time consuming. It takes um, a, a long time and uh, a lot of consultations and a lot of checking, whereas policy instruments um, might be um, uh, a more flexible way to go about it and have more specific objectives, perhaps. So some of the legal um, motivations that we've seen in countries, or actually most of them, I would say, have more of a definitional angle. They want to make sure that everybody understands and knows um, what social economy is, what type of entities we're talking about, so that it's clear who gets access to resources and um, opportunities. On the other hand, policies might have a, a lot more varied um, objectives and um, perhaps may focus more on how to improve the policy environment and how to 
um, uh, create a more enabling ecosystem. So to conclude from all this is um, a legal framework is not a must, but we know that many countries already have um, a, a legal framework, be it um, a, a framework law or various elements of what might um, be an, an enabling environment. And so when you're talking about this today, we don't just mean how to start setting it up from scratch, but also what can you do to improve the existing framework? Do you need to improve the existing framework? How do you assess whether that's the case? And um, what are some options to do so? There are other alternatives, and Amal will talk about this as well, certification, various labels. And so um, policy tools are best to go in combo with legal approaches. On the next slide, I um, wanted to also point out that creating or um, updating uh, the legal framework for social economy it doesn't happen in a vacuum. There are many other laws, as you know, um, that affect um, the functioning and the uh, effectiveness and the opportunities for social economy, be it, you know, existing um, um, legal forms, company laws, various charity laws, other regulation regarding legal entities. There are many other um, laws that uh, focus on sectors or uh, impact areas, if you may. So regulation relating to health or um, hospitality or waste management or education, they um, um, influence and affect the content or, or the impact of what social economy does, as well as special specific regulation that is targeting various um, uh, groups disadvantaged or not in society. So social economy navigates in all of this. And when we're looking at the legal framework and um, the, the necessity and benefits, it's very good to take all of this into account. On the next slide, you will see a few um, uh, points about um, how the national context is already there. So many countries already have social economy or social enterprise laws. And it's very important to, to look at those and evaluate whether they need updating. The, the field changes very rapidly. And so there, there are many things to take into account when uh, thinking about, you know, do we have a, a good legal framework, be it um, not only its, its technical uh, user friendliness, but also how, for example, European regulation affects what we need to do at a national level or how our stakeholders' needs evolve that we could reflect in maybe more enabling laws. And reflecting back on the previous slide, it's always good to have some sort of an assessment lens looking at existing relevant legislation and how we, we bring social economy um, legal provisions into that. On the next slide, um, I very quickly jotted down a few um, benefits that I've heard from you, but also have seen in my uh, practice across various stakeholder consultations on why it might be a good idea. And um, recognition and visibility we've talked about, especially within the state administration, but also in, in general, um, so the public eye, better access to finance and markets for social economy. One is public procurement, other might be preferential um, uh, loans, investments, guarantees, tax advantages. I'm not going to go into detail because um, our colleague from Luxembourg will, I'm sure, talk about this with regards or in connection with their law on societal impact companies. Um, but also what's very important is that policy measures can build on uh, legal definitions that are provided by the legal framework. And so um, this might be actually a precondition, and, and I'm sure that Amal will talk about this more in, in detail. On the next slide, I wanted to refer very quickly to your, your survey, where I, I just summarized from the responses that we got, what you said about uh, the added value of a legal framework. And as you can see, a lot of you thought definition, so understanding what it is and what it isn't, might be the most important added value, but also many of you thought visibility and promotion, recognition, awareness, 
listing what legal forms belong to social economy um, and how to um, to use this as a basis for other measures. These were mentioned. On the next slide, I also picked out of, um, some challenges. Um, again, this is not an exhaustive list, but some things that people had learned and mentioned, and also I saw in uh, many strategy documents. Um, one of them is regulating too early, or if there's no strategy. So this basically means if you have a very young um, ecosystem, regulation may be um, stifling rather than enabling and fostering its further evolution, because simply there is no understanding by many stakeholders, or there are too few actors, or those actors may be at a very early stage in their development. Design of a legal form or statute might not always respond to the needs if it's not based on wide, widespread consultation with stakeholders. And again, we'll come back to, I think, that building block of how important it is from the get-go to consult with stakeholders to identify their needs and gaps. Implementation might not follow. This is a, a very common practical challenge, I think, um, and often quite a frustrating uh, finding, I think, from many analysis and, and from stakeholders' point of view. There's a great set of laws and nobody implements them because there's no implementation directive or because there's no resource or there's no responsible unit. So I think it's good to good to take this into account also and being realistic. And the timeline, um, as we have alluded to before, um, legislating, pushing um, uh, uh, a draft law through all the, the necessary hurdles takes a long time. And so considering whether this is the first next step is, um, is an important consideration. If I have a a few more minutes. Have I got a few more minutes, Helene? Because I'm also aware of the time. Thank you. Then I'd like to just again um, show a few slides, flash up the next one from your survey. What were again some interesting points that came up? Very much um, the recognition that uh, um, regulation might not might help to um, um, recognize how important social economy is in certain policy areas. Um, social innovation or um, employment creation were mentioned very frequently, many challenges. And so um, I think the, the breakout groups will be discussing this a lot, how consultation with stakeholders is not so straightforward as we would think, reaching out to them and actually summarizing and reconciling everyone's opinion can be quite a challenge identifying which legal forms should be included in, in the legal, legal framework, what are some um, difficulties with adapting best practices into your local or national context? Um, how do you actually bring social economy entities on board? Where do you find the resources to work on a legal framework and implement it? Um, how do you make sure that it's not too prescriptive? How do you avoid that? And um, what what do you do about the criterion and uh, and uh, the um, I guess eligibility um, when designing, um, for example, a social uh, economy registry, a social enterprise re registry? There was a question in the survey that I thought was interesting about revising your existing framework, and many of you said yes, it's necessary. It's necessary to keep up to date with the evolution of the field. Uh, also to integrate new sectors where social enterprises um, um, uh, become active or appear as impact um, uh, agents and to offer a much broader definition in view of social economy. And I think that's a very welcome uh, remark there, rather than restricting and, and making it too specific and exclusive, make it a broader thing. Biggest obstacle um, for those countries that don't have a framework yet they mentioned political support, political endorsement, and actually also on the other side, lack of support from the social economy sector, in addition to lack of understanding. Now, moving on very quickly, um, is there an evaluation mechanism? Amal will talk about this as a really important um, um, element as well. In most countries, there isn't currently. 
in some that it's included in the law itself. Um, and there are some that mention various other methods, external or post, um, 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 like um, evaluation methods such as uh, audits or regular mapping studies, um, et cetera. I have to move on to social impact in two minutes, which is really going to be challenging. So I'm not going to attempt to do anything um, very comprehensive here, because I think maybe a, a workshop of itself could be devoted to this topic if there's interest. But uh, from your survey, we found out, not surprisingly, that many people are not really familiar with this topic. So there needs to be um, uh, a lot more discussion, sharing of best practice. In some cases, uh, social impact measurement is somehow into included in their existing laws and policies, more with a compliance or um, accountability angle. Um, very usefully, public procurement provisions contain this, um, where this was mentioned. And um, there are ways other than legal provisions to do something about social impact measurement that governments are aware of, such as research and mapping studies, some tools which might um, uh, be available but are not used very much, and definitely on, on sort of program level, this has already been noticed and, and, um, and most participants were aware. On the next slide, just very quickly um, going through why this would be important to think about. I think the main point is not that governments and uh, the state needs to do social impact measurement for social economy. I think the main point is that it needs to understand what social economy is doing and therefore any kind of impact information is useful as an evidence, as a basis for better policy, for making those enabling frameworks. Standardization often is, a, is, a, is an ambition, but I think um, the discussions will come to that. that. That is very challenging in any area, not just in social impact measurement, because the social economy is so diverse it, in, in many respects, size, evolution, stage development, sector, bringing it all together into one um, um, measure would be very difficult and would not have much use. And the other thing um, that makes it really important and useful is to build the capacity of social economy and social impact measurement. And so um, this again emphasizes the role of, of the facilitator, the um, the role of um, government to coordinate, incentivize social economy to do this better, because that will help government itself to to get to data, to gather data, and and have a, a, a better understanding. And of course, there are many ways uh, to do this, which we will be discussing. So I'm not attempting to go into methodology, but I think that it's important that there are. Uh, uh, ways to verify and, and gather data about social impact. On the next um, uh, slide, I tried to, um, to show a few of these with some examples where we see different approaches. Um, one we talked about a lot, um, which is the legal, how, how uh, it might be included in your legal provisions that social impact measurement is important, not necessarily that you have to uh, submit X, Y, Z indicators because the government will uh, or someone in the government will integrate those or aggregate those. But just to show that what you're doing really meets the, um, the, the criteria. The other is there are many ways that policy uh, measures can incentivize moving towards reporting standards. Germany is the case. Data gathering exercises that exist in a lot of countries. Ireland was picked up as an example earlier, and Portugal with the satellite accounts, where um, they gather not only data about the, the actual um, universe of social enterprise, but also what is their effectiveness and impact. And finally, an interesting instrument, um, which um, I think can be discussed in great detail at some point, is how some of the financing instruments in and of, it, in and of themselves can actually help 
um, in the measurement. But the measurement doesn't happen or it doesn't fly without setting the goals. And so I think this takes us back to setting objectives and a vision. Um, and so if we don't know what outcomes and what impact we're after, this is this is going to be very difficult and challenging. On the final slide, again, uh, some ideas and some feedback from you on what is needed in order to uh, to move forward on social impact measurement. A lot of you said that um, understanding what it is would be really grateful. So some sort of definition of what social impact is. Um, Seeing social economy entities and social enterprises from up close. That was interesting. Many of you said that to understand what they're actually doing and to have a better overview of tools and methodologies, get best practices, um, but with a practical and pragmatic um, uh, view, not necessarily very scientific and academic. So I'm going to close here. I don't know if we have any time for questions, um, considering um, we're already running at a little bit over time, but thank you for your attention. And, and, and I know this is a lot to digest, but hopefully we'll deconstruct this um, during the rest of the morning. <laughs>